This month marks two years since the withdrawal of U.S. troops from Afghanistan. President Biden's decision to end the 20-year war in 2021 led to the swift collapse of the Afghan government and then to the Taliban takeover. The State Department, in an after-action report, recently was widely criticized for the lack of preparation that led to the chaos at the Kabul airport as Afghans climbed onto planes desperate to leave. And the resulting terror attack, of course, 10 days later, that killed 13 American service members and more than 150 Afghans. The crisis is not over for 76,000 Afghan allies who were evacuated alongside U.S. troops. They are living in the U.S., but now they face the challenge of staying in the country. Congress has failed so far to create a path for legal permanent residency, leaving some evacuees in legal limbo, unable to keep their jobs. Those who have them. And joining me now is Jack McCain, Afghanistan war veteran, former military advisor as part of the Afghan Hands program. He's also the son, of course, of the late Arizona Republican, great American hero, Senator John McCain. And Jack, I've known you for many years in your family, and it's great to see you in this role. Not surprising at all, considering, you know, the public service legacy of the McCain family, including your mother as an ambassador. Um, you've been advocating to keep Afghans in the U.S. You've helped dozens of Afghans settle in the U.S. Tell us why this is so personal for you. This is so personal to me uh, because I flew and fought alongside Afghan pilots throughout Kandahar and Helmand for a year of my life. I truly believe that I'm still around thanks to the heroism of, few, of a few of them. Um, when the collapse came, uh, a dedicated group of people um, across all walks of life, whether they were military or civilian, got together to bring them to the United States. And that now we have a moral responsibility to make sure that they're capable of staying. I read that you said that, in particular, the people around you kept your identity secret for quite some time, for, for most of that year, um, until you had to reveal your identity by coming home before your father's funeral. You know, but if you if it had been known that you were, you know, Jack McCain, son of John McCain, that could have certainly put a target on you for a lot of, you know, a, a lot of danger, threats to your life. Uh, my uh, biggest concern was less worry for my own personal safety and more the worry of those around me. Um, I did make a high profile target. Um, but the pilots and crews that I worked with, despite the fact they knew who I was, um, kept that a secret uh, and um, made sure that I wasn't a, a high-profile target. So I um, will be grateful for the rest of my life for their efforts. And to, to those Afghan heroes uh, who did get out and got here, um, I've talked to some who cannot get jobs. And this lack of permanent residency is a real problem. Some who have tremendous talents who work for the State Department, for instance. We all know that not all got out. Some who were left behind and finally got out. So what can be done with this legislation to try to give them some path to being able to support their families? Absolutely. Um, the Afghan Adjustment Act is a, a must pass in my mind. Uh, we have to make sure that Afghans who made it to the United States and those still waiting to come can stay here and have their their legal status. Uh, right now, we are hoping uh, that in conference, the bill can get included into the NDAA. Uh, we know that we have the votes to pass it. We just need the vehicle uh, to do it. And we need members of Congress on both sides of the aisle uh, to move the legislation forward because we are reaching a crisis point with their legal status right now. Of course, the NDAA, which is always a must pass bill with strong bipartisan support is this year, you know, improbably held up by one senator and the objections, uh, Senator Tuberville's objections, which is holding up military promotions as well. So it's, it, this is now part of the mix. You needed to get this on the defense bill. Uh, we, we want any vehicle to get it passed. The NDAA is uh, one that we believe it has a great chance, obviously, because it is a must pass. But um, whatever the vehicle is, we will not stop fighting in order to pass the bill. We as Americans, we as service members, we as the United States have a debt of honor and a moral responsibility to make sure that those that fought alongside us, those that are put in danger, 
because of that, um, them and their family members are able to stay here in the United States. If I may get personal and ask you, and I think I know the answer from what you're doing right now, how has your father's legacy inspired and informed your work? Uh, when my father returned from Vietnam, um, he approached the rest of his political career with the idea of reconciliation um, and making sure as well the Vietnam Adjustment Act was, was passed in the United States, uh, similar to what we would like to do with the Afghan Adjustment Act. Um, I also agree with the idea of reconciliation, but most importantly, taking care of those uh, who, who bet their lives on the promises of the United States. So his legacy um, absolutely has informed my work, but also the, my personal experiences, um, the, the love and caring that I have for the Afghans, I flew and fought alongside, um, and belief that the United States is uh, the place that should do the right thing. Um, it is morally incumbent upon us to make sure that it's done.